Welcome to the Marketing Lecture Series. In this episode, we're going to talk about consumer behavior. When we look at consumer behavior, we want to look at three specific ideas or categories. Number one, what do consumers purchase, how we purchase, and what influences our purchasing habits. And so when we look at this idea of what consumers are purchasing, are they buying something they need? Is it a want? Uh, where do they purchase it from? What are consumers, uh, what are their preferences? Uh, how do they purchase? Are they purchasing products online? Are they purchasing products in a store? Are they doing the research online then purchasing in a store? How are they getting to the, the components of their process and, and you know we'll talk about that in, in further slides but how is it that what are the steps that the consumer is going to be taking for a specific product or service and then what are their influences are they influenced by advertising are they influenced by salespeople are they influenced by their friends and family or other uh, cultural subgroups that they might be in but what are the things that are influencing people to make purchases And so to understand that, we must first look at the buying process. And really there's three steps to the buying process. Number one is identification. And when we talk about identification, is at some point in time a customer needs to identify that they have a need or a want for a product. And so once they recognize that there's a need or desire for that, then they will start the... Uh, research and evaluation process for those products. And so they may conduct online research, they may ask friends or family, um, but they are starting to research that product. And then uh, at this point, all brands are considered candidates for the purchase. And so they are really looking at across the board, all right, I need a new car, what's out there? Then once we hit the, the step of getting into the purchase, now we may have um, done a couple things at this, this step. We may have limited our search parameters and say based on the information that we have collected, we are now looking at uh, sections A, B, or C. And so maybe we've, we've cut down to three options. And then after that, now we've got to decide, all right, three things. I'm either going to A, make the purchase, B, delay the purchase, or C, not the purchase at all. Now, I could decide to delay the purchase because maybe I don't have the money for the purchase. Um, maybe I've decided that I don't need it right now. I might need it in six months. From business to business perspective, maybe budgets aren't going to be out for six months, and that's when new money is going to arrive. Uh, maybe it's not needed until that point in time. Uh, I may decide not to purchase because, based on my research, I may have found something else that can fit the need at the time. Um, I could have repaired or um, created new functionality for what I have at this moment. Um, so the those are the next three steps. And then after, obviously, if I've decided to delay or not to purchase, then the process kind of stops. If I have decided to go through the entire process of purchasing, now I need to evaluate that purchase. Um, was I happy with what I got? It. Um, what was my level of expectation, of satisfaction? And um, would I purchase this product again? Or would I purchase this product from uh, a similar product or another product from this company? Then in the same point, in the same token, what's going to happen is I'm going to tell people if I enjoyed the experience or not. Um, scientifically, they've done research and people tell a significant, significant much, uh, many more people um, are told about a dissatisfied customer experience than a positive customer experience. And so then you're saying, okay, 
but it seemed like a lengthy process. Um, do we all use a process? Yes, every one of us uses a process. Now, that process may take months for a new car, and it may take seconds for a gallon of milk. You know, when I go to the grocery store and I'm, I'm looking at milk, I am not going through an evaluation process. I'm not calling my friends and family and saying, well, I'm here at the grocery store. I'm really kind of between Dean's and Roundy's brand. I'm not sure which milk to go with. What milk do you get? All right, for me, milk decision, okay, I look at it, okay, what's the cheapest one? Okay, this is only $35 a gallon. I will get that gallon of milk. Uh, and so the time spent on a purchase varies. Now, if it's the first time I've ever purchased milk, I've never purchased milk before in my entire life, well, maybe I might spend some more time purchasing milk. Um, but as I now have brand loyalty or I'm familiar with a specific brand or I've purchased this product before, now I feel a little bit more comfortable purchasing it over and over again. Uh, consumer business to business customers are going to have different buying motives. And uh, from a marketing perspective, we need to understand what is the buying motive of our customers. You know, um, if I am going to a retail store and I work for, let's say, um, Coca-Cola Pepsi, and I'm trying to get my product into their store, uh, sure, one of the things in our conversation may be how our product taste versus the competition. But what are some of the things that retailer wants to know? Retailer wants to know how much space you've taken up. He wants to know what kind of uh, payment options that I have. Are you gonna give me a cooler? And what's my return on the investment? How profitable am I gonna be selling your product? And both on business to business and consumer, the role of technology has changed the consumer's knowledge base. And so they're getting a lot of information online about their product before they even meet the salesperson. This can both be an advantage or disadvantage for us. The challenge from a marketing perspective is we don't know where customers are getting their information and how accurate that information is. And so when we talk about consumer purchases, consumer purchases are gonna fall in one of three categories. And so when we talk about uh, low involvement purchases, this is something that we might do over and over again. It's something that, there's not a lot of thought process involved in it. There's not a lot of effort tied into it. Um, you're at the grocery checkout and you see People Magazine and you grab it and you, you put it on your shelf or you, you grab something from the point of purchase. Or, you know, um, grocery shopping a lot of times is, is low involvement because every time we go, I know I need milk, right? We have to have milk every single time. Or I might just run into the store with no real agenda, I mean, two or three items. How many times have you gone to the grocery store with the idea that, okay, I'm gonna get two or three items, you end up there with $100 worth of groceries. It's not that difficult to do. Um, and so uh, generally low involvement means the price point is going to be lower for that product. Uh, medium involvement, that means I'm going to be doing some evaluation on the product. It means that... Um, It's not something I purchase as frequently. Um, I may spend time and effort prior to this purchase to uh, look at it. Um, that could be like a TV. You know, you might go back and forth on a TV four or five times. It's something you're not gonna buy every, every day or every week for that matter. Uh, but you're gonna spend some time researching it, but not necessarily backbreaking time researching it. High involvement, it means you're really going through all the steps of the process. Uh, you're evaluating, you're looking at it. If I think back to uh, when I purchased my first house, uh, that was a high involvement purchase. It was the biggest purchase I've ever made. Uh, and it's the biggest purchase I've, I've made since then. Uh, and I had a chart that I filled out every single property we looked at and 
we identified what the backyard looked like, what was the bedrooms like, what were the what was the basement like, what was the garage like, and truly identified and rated every single room in the house. And so it was very high involvement because there's a large amount of money that was going to be spent. And so I knew that um, it isn't something I was going to be doing again in the near future. And it was something that I knew I had to make sure that I completed all the steps or all the tasks um, correctly. We talk about business to business purchases. Generally, they're going to fall in one of three categories. Number one is a straight rebuy. That means uh, last month I ordered 500 widgets. I would like to order 500 again this month. And so there's no research done in it because you've already done that. If you've already done your research, you know the product, you know what you're getting, and so you're just reordering. Modified rebuy um, you're adding something new to a product you've purchased previously and so you might do uh, last month I ordered 500 widgets I would like the 500 widgets with this accessory now and so that's a modified rebuy you might do some research into that rebuy uh, you might do a new uh, set of quotes out to uh, price shop that product um, but it's something you have purchased before that you're, you're tweaking or you're changing a little bit and a new buy this is going to be the highest involvement from a business to business side meaning I have new specifications, something I've never purchased before, and so you're going to go through all of those steps of the process. And so when we look at what are the influences on consumer behavior, uh, number one, we talk about senses. Uh, how can a marketer a market organization reach out to the senses of their consumers. Now that could be um, visual senses. Uh, you look at some companies have created a brand loyalty with the um, with how even the colors that they use in their logos. Uh, let's say uh, Home Depot. That's a very specific color. They've actually trademarked their color. Um, when we talk about uh, hearing, how can that um, create an identity? Uh, Harley Davidson has this very specific sound to their motorcycles, uh, and, and they've actually copyrighted the sound uh, that their motorcycles make, and so that creates an identity with the consumer. Obviously, if you have a food product, taste becomes something, uh, smell. Uh, it is a sense that can get people to um, take action. Um, it may give them something that they remember. Um, it can, quite honestly, when you smell food being cooked, do you get hungry? Think about it. Um, and so some of it might be even senses from the idea of childhood memories, uh, a, a point in time that was important to you. Uh, and that's why advertising's nostalgia ads are very successful. Uh, conditioning, it could be we get used to or conditioned to a specific action or activity. Um, again, when I go to the grocery store, I get milk. Right? Nine out of ten times at the grocery store, I'm getting milk. I could have gone three days earlier. I'm still going to get milk. Uh, and so I'm conditioned to that is where I go. And sometimes we condition consumers based on how we lay out our facilities in our stores. We are conditioned that we need to walk through the entire store to get to the milk department, right? And um, we are conditioned by what other people uh, do around us. Uh, companies um, can identify um, Attitudes. What is my attitude towards a brand? Maybe positive or negative. What's my attitude towards a specific uh, function? Um, I might have a negative attitude towards tattoos. You know, um, why is that? What is my attitude towards um, being an environmentalist? Right? And so if I know I am going to be more apt to have an attitude of being quote unquote green. 
know, those are the those are the people that Toyota wants to go after for their Prius. That's the market that they want to go after. And so we want to tie into consumers' attitudes on specific topics and see if we can take their attitudes on topics and make that a part of a decision-making process for them. Part of that attitudes piece is fear. You know, fear, fear is a, a great motivator uh, for people. Um, you're seeing um, people make decisions based on uh, fears that they might have. It, that's how people sell life insurance. Life insurance is sold based off of fear. We talk about cultural influences. How do how does our behavior and our actions change as we change in age? Do we purchase different products as we get older? Are we um, spending less on discretionary? items as we get older um, there could be other influences socioeconomic part of that could be family units as family units change you know my purchasing habits now that i have a son is different than it was when i didn't um, are there social and economic uh, cultures i am part of is it um, you know how, how are people's purchasing habits changing as our economy has changed you know, people um, might be using credit cards less. And so because of that, they might actually be spending less, uh, but saving money. How does that, what target does that create? How does that change my current customer base? If we're seeing high unemployment, how is that going to change their decision-making process? Obviously, if you have less money, you're going to be spending less, and you're going to change um, what products and services you're purchasing. And cultural influences also come to play with what, even in the United States, what part of the country you live in. And so there's certain decision-making processes or different types of businesses that exist in the southern region of the country that don't exist in the Midwest. And so a lot of times our location is going to affect um, our buying habits. 